This one is for all of my note takers out there. Now, whether you're a student, a business professional, or just somebody who likes to have all of their thoughts in one concise place, this video is for you. Today, we're gonna to be looking at OneNote. OneNote is note-taking software developed by Microsoft. Now, there's a lot of things that we can do with OneNote. Today's video is just going to be an introductory as to what it is, how to use it, and then I sprinkled in there just a few tips and tricks for those of you that have used OneNote, but you may not know of all of its capabilities. So get ready, because today we're going to make OneNote simple. The very first thing that we need to do is go to office.com. Now, because OneNote is a part of the Office applications, if you have a Microsoft Office account, you can access OneNote. For those of you that don't have a Microsoft account, you can sign up for free, but there are going to be limitations as to what you can use. To show you the difference between both of them, I'm going to start the tutorial off in the online version of the account, which is the free account, and then I'm going to transition into the desktop version of the application, which is the one that you have to have the Microsoft subscription for. That way you can see some of the different benefits that are included in there, and then you can make your decision whether or not you want to pay for the subscription. When you go to office.com, you're either going to sign in or sign up. I'm gonna go ahead and sign into my account so that way we can access the application. When you sign into your Office account, it's going to bring you to that dashboard. Over on the left-hand side, you'll see all of the applications that you most frequently use. And then you're also going to see a little button that says Apps. When you click on that button, you'll have access to all of the applications inside of Microsoft. From there, You'll search for OneNote and then open the application. Once your application is opened, I just wanna talk through a few things that you're going to see right at the very beginning. If you have any notebooks that you've already created, your most recent notebooks are gonna show up right there in front. Then if you have any notebooks that you go back to frequently, you can pin those notebooks right there in that location so it's easier for you to find them. The next button is the My Notebooks. You'll have a list of all of the notebooks that you've created. Then you see the notebooks that have been shared with you. You can work on multiple notebooks together with other people. So all of those shared notebooks will pop up in that location. And then the last button that you see is the discover button. If somebody has shared a notebook with you, whether it's to edit the notebook or to view the notebook, you'll be able to discover those notebooks there. Now, when you're ready, let's go ahead and build our first notebook together. When you're ready, click on the purple button that says new notebook. That's gonna bring up a dialog box that allows you to name your brand new notebook. Once your notebook is named, it's going to take you into the notebook dashboard. Over to the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see your notebook. Each notebook is divided up into different sections, and then each section of that notebook has different pages. So think of one of those big five-star notebooks. Within that one notebook, you can have multiple sections, and then within each of those sections, you have different pages for the notes that you're going to take. There's a few different ways that you can create new sections. At the very bottom of your screen, on that section tab, it will say add new section, and then next to it, it'll say add new page. You can also right click on that section, and it will say add a new section. I wanna look at right clicking for just a second. Whenever you right click on an object, it pulls up a menu that allows you to customize that object. Here, you can rename, you can delete a section, we saw that you can add a new section, and then you can also change that section color. Once all of your sections are created, the next thing to do is create pages within those. When you create a new page, the prompt is to give you a page title, and then right underneath of it, it tells you the date and time as to which you created it. Now, I'm gonna start typing some text here. When you're typing the text, the same ribbon that you would have access to in Microsoft Word, changing the font, changing the font color, the font size, you can do all of those things here with the text that you've created inside of your notebook. You can type in text the way that you want, you can add bullets, you can add numbering, you can also dictate what you want to be shown. Here, for my lookup functions, I'm gonna use my dictate tool, which is the microphone. When you click on your dictate button, a little dictate section is gonna pop up at the bottom of your screen. From there, you have start dictating, and then you have your dictation settings. When I start dictating, I'm gonna say some of the functions that I want to be listed. The first one is the VLOOKUP function. 
The next one underneath of that will be the H lookup function. If you look closely, the dictation is wrong at first, and then it corrects itself to the H lookup function. When you're ready to stop dictating, you'll click on that microphone again, and then you can stop your dictation. The next section that I want to pinpoint are the tags. If you saw my video on Zotero last week, you know that tags can be extremely beneficial and useful for productivity. If you didn't get to watch that video, I'll go ahead and link it in the description so that way you have a chance to see it. Here, we can also include tags in our notebook. This is going to allow us to quickly pinpoint things that we wanna see within our pages. On my tag section, I have an entire list of tags that I can apply. You have to-do marks, you have important marks, idea marks. I'll list a few tags here, and this is going to be very important moving forward when we get into our desktop application. So for now, I'm just going to apply some tags and then we're going to see how it works in just a little bit. When you begin typing on your page, I want you to notice that all of those boxes are free moving. So you don't just have to have things listed out vertically. Whatever you type now becomes a text box and you can move that text box wherever you want. You can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, and you can change the position of that box on the screen. This allows you to have things listed side by side, put something in the middle. You're in control of how you want your notebook to be formatted. Now that we've seen a little bit of the home tab, again, that home tab is gonna be pretty familiar to you if you've ever worked with Microsoft Word. You have your styles, your text, your fonts, all of that. Let's move to the insert tab. On the insert tab, this is where we can put other things into our pages. For example, we can create tables in our documents and it will store that table structure into our notebook. When you create your table, you can format the way that that table appears. Now I wanna remind you, with the online version, you are limited to just a few options. So you have the ability to select parts, delete parts, you can format the colors of your table and then you can format some of those borders. But that's pretty much it in the formatting category. The next thing that you can insert is a picture. We can put images into our pages. Now, please don't think that this tool is just for students who are taking notes in a classroom setting. This can be extremely beneficial to just the ordinary person. Think of a cookbook. Instead of having pages in a cookbook or having five, six, seven, eight multiple cookbooks in separate locations and then not knowing where they are and trying to find all of those resources, you can transfer all of those paper cookbooks into an online notebook and you can add all of those recipes there. You have every single recipe right there at your hand. You can add pictures of the recipes. We can put links in there. All of that data is accessible to you. So this isn't just for students. This can be practical for everybody. So going back to the pictures, we're gonna put a picture of just a, a computer screen in here so that way you can see it working. Once I insert that picture, you can move it around, you can change the size of it, the location of it, all of that is available to you. Okay, now let's get into the fun stuff. We saw how you can insert tables and you can insert pictures. There's also a button there that says insert a file. Now this is where we have the breakdown between your online version and then the application version. In the online version, when you click on that insert a file button, you have two options. You can either insert a file attachment or you can insert a file printout. Let's look at the insert file attachment first. When you click on that button, it's going to prompt you to your files so that way you can choose the file that you want to attach. Once you choose the correct file, you now have two options. You can either upload this document to your OneDrive account and then insert that link or you can insert it as an attachment. I'll show you both of those just so you can see how it's going to look with both options. So the first one is to uploading it to OneDrive and then inserting a link. When you click on that, you're gonna see a little refresh button because it's going to take you to OneDrive and upload that document to your OneDrive account. Now keep in mind, anything that's in your OneDrive, you have access to on the cloud. So it doesn't necessarily have to be right here in this location. You'll have access to that document anywhere. Once it's done uploading to the cloud, it's going to insert a link into your page. That link will give you access to that document on OneDrive. The next thing that we wanna see is uploading a file as an attachment. I'll go through the same exact process and click on the file that we wanna upload. 
Now when you see it, it's an actual attachment showing on our page. It's no longer a link to that resource. When I click on the link that was given for the cloud, that's going to take me to the online version of PowerPoint and pull up that application. Now mine is showing in PowerPoint because I decided to upload a PowerPoint presentation. Whatever you upload, whether it's Excel or Word, it will take you to that online version of the application. The second option is that attachment. When you click on it, it says that it can't open that copy in OneNote, mine's a PowerPoint presentation, and it can't open PowerPoint in OneNote, but it can download that. So you'll see it pop up in my downloads. Now we're about to switch over onto the desktop application so we can see just a few more features that OneNote has to offer. Before we do that, I do wanna make sure that you are aware in the top right-hand corner of your screen, whether you're on OneNote online or OneNote desktop, you'll see your share button and your edit button. Your share button allows you to give access to whether your entire notebook or different sections of your notebook to other people. You'll see share your entire notebook or copy a link to this so that way other people can see it or edit it. And then underneath of that, you have your manage access button that will allow you to see who has access to this notebook, what exactly they have access to, and then you can choose to give more access or take away someone's access from there. Then you see your edit button. This allows you to edit inside your, your online version or switch over to the desktop application. Now again, the desktop application, this is available for people who have a paid Microsoft subscription. So we're gonna switch over just so we can see a few key things that the desktop version has available that the online version doesn't. Okay, now that we're in the desktop, I feel like I need to explain this just slightly. This is an old notebook that I used for when I was taking a class on project management. I just chose this because it has a lot of data inside of it and we're gonna use some of this data in some of our explanations. So let's go back to that file button that we saw previously. In the online version, we could either upload the attachment or we could upload a link. When I click on the file button now, it goes through the same process of having me choose what I wanna upload. Then when I select it, now I have three options. I can upload it to the cloud like I did before. I can include an attachment like I did before. And then that third one is going to be so helpful to you. You can take, whether it's a PowerPoint presentation, a Word document, whatever document it is, and you can insert it as a printout. When I take that document and insert it as a printout, here I still have a PowerPoint presentation. It'll take that presentation from a PowerPoint PPTX and it will convert it to a PDF which will allow me to annotate that PowerPoint presentation. From here, you can use your drawing tools and annotate specific parts of that presentation. You can circle key things, you can use your highlighter and highlight key phrases. Anything that you need to annotate, you can put that into your pages and make all of your notations there. You can also edit your annotations once they're made. You have your eraser there. If you accidentally made a mistake, you can erase parts of it, entire strokes. Then you have your selecting tools and those selecting tools allow you to choose marks that you made on this document. Now it doesn't select things that were previously on the document, it's just the marks that you made on the document. And then you can modify those. You can make annotations bigger, smaller, you can change the color of those, the thickness of the lines. All of that is available to you with those selecting tools. Do you remember those tags that we added in our very first notebook that we were creating? I'm gonna go ahead and add some more tags here just because I have more data listed out here. I have some definitions. You see the definition of a project, the definition of a stakeholder. I'm going to highlight those definitions and I'll apply a definitions tag. I'll also go through and choose some key components that I need to make sure that I remember later on. Once you apply those tags, over on the left-hand side, you see the magnifying glass. That magnifying glass allows you to find certain components within your notebook. The first thing that you see when you click on that magnifying glass is pages. You can search for different things on pages. The next thing that you see is the tags button. And this allows you to choose the tags that you've selected. If I type in the definition tag, it'll pull up every single thing within this book that has a definition tag associated to it. 
Those of you that are studying terms definition, this is extremely helpful so that way you know exactly how your notes are broken down. If I wanna find things that are important or things that I had a question about or ideas about, you can put the name of that tag inside the search bar and it'll pull up down at the bottom everything that has that tag associated with it. The next tab that I wanna look at is the view tab. This allows you to customize how you want to view all of your pages within your notebook. The first thing that you see is switching to dark mode. If you like your things in dark mode to be easier on your eyes, you can switch it on off right there by just pressing the switch background button. You see your page versions button. This allows you to see different versions of the page that you had. If you had multiple versions saved and you don't need those anymore, you can choose to delete all previous versions and you can choose to just keep this version and get rid of all the rest of those. If you made notes on your pages and you got rid of those, you'll be able to see all of your deleted notes pop up right there. You can add password protection to each of your notebooks. If it is sensitive data and you wanna make sure no one is able to get into that, you can add a password to your notebook. You can customize the way that your page is viewed by changing the page color. You can add lines to your pages, whether you want college rule, the thin lines, wide rules, thicker lines, medium sized lines. You can even add grid lines to your page. So you can customize this exactly the way that you need it for whatever you're using it for. You can even change the color of the lines that you wanna have on your notebook. All of those customizations, those are available for you and you can change them to be however you want whether it's for the entire notebook or for just that one section within the notebook. You can even translate within the application. Whether you're writing in English and you need something to be translated to a different language or something was in a different language and you need it to be translated back to English, if you highlight the section that you need to translate, you can click on that translate button. Over on the right hand side, you'll be able to choose from to, and you have a list of all of those languages available and it will translate that portion for you. Just to make sure if there is a language barrier between whatever language you're using, you are understanding how your notes are written out correctly. The next tab that we wanna look at is the audio tab. The audio tab allows you to hear audio and take notes while that's going on. It will record the audio for you and then it will keep track of the notes as to when you typed those notes in accordance to when the audio was taken. I'm gonna give you an example of just an audio recording. This is note number one. This is note number two. This is note number three. This is note number three. Did you see how when I clicked on this is note number three, I knew exactly as to when that note was typed in accordance to what was being spoken while it was being typed. This is extremely helpful for those of you that like to watch videos and learn things from the videos. You can have the video playing in the background and then take notes on exactly the, the points that you want to take notes on and it will remember those key points in accordance to the audio. The last tab that you see there is the class notebook. Now this is very, very beneficial for teachers. You can have students and share things within your classes so everyone has access to the same document. They have all of their notes right there. Very, very helpful and beneficial. That's gonna be a tutorial for a different day. Today was just the basics with a few tips and tricks on how to make OneNote simple. If this video was a help to you, if you learned something new, please let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. For now, my name is Nikki and this is Simple Tech Media.